Hello everyone, my name is Hossein Musavi Hondori. I'm presenting the use of a portable device for measuring arms planar mechanical impedance during motion. My colleagues Mariam Khademi and Krista Lopez helped me with this project. Uh, we are from Donald Brennan School of Information and Computer Science at the University of California at Irvine. Uh, for any correspondences, please write to the email provided here. Uh, and I'm uh, sorry I could not make it to the conference. Uh, presentation outline is, I will start with introduction where I talk where I talk about the stroke, hemiplegia, and impedance. It will be followed by related work where I talk about impedance measurement methods, such as robotic methods. Uh, then I will introduce uh, the method of this work, which is based on centrifugal perturbations. It will be followed by implementation and the results of the test, and the end of this uh, presentation will be discussion and conclusion. Stroke destroys brain cells and causes loss of motor function. If it happens in the left hemisphere, the right side of the body will be paralyzed. Uh, in the right hemisphere, the left side of the body will be paralyzed. So after stroke, the patients need to undergo physical therapy and rehabilitation for which assessment is required uh, the traditional assessment methods are qualitative and subjective. So people have been interested in using robotic technology to focus on temporal, kinetic, and kinematic variables in, uh, in an objective and quantitative manner. Uh, some other people have been interested in stiffness, which is part of the mechanical property of the system. Uh, it is actually part of mechanical impedance, which is a broader definition of the mechanical property of the system, incorporating stiffness, damping, and inertia. Uh, impedance of a joint is consists consists of impedance of uh, usually a pair of muscles, flexor or agonist muscle, and extensor and the antagonist muscle, uh, where the increase of the impedance of each muscle will contribute to the increase of the impedance of the joint. And the coactivation of the muscle selectively can control torque and impedance in the same time. However, most importantly is to consider imp impedance in the task space, uh, whereas it is actually controlled in the muscle space. So what the brain controls is the length and the impedance of each muscle and the amount of force that the muscle generate. It doesn't control directly uh, the joints, nor does it control directly uh, the, uh, the task space. So for, in order for, for it to control the task, it needs to consider transformation between muscle space into joint space and then from joint space into task space. The robotic devices have been used for measuring the impedance uh, are based on uh, per perturbation like impulse perturbation or trapezoidal perturbation where the subject reached from point A to point B and then somewhere in the middle of the uh, reaching trajectory the hand is per uh, per per perpendicular to the direction of the motion and then the correlation of the force applied and the response uh, will provide the amount of imp impedance. So looking at this graph, it shows the impedance measured by a robotic device. It is elliptical, and it has major and minor axes, of course. The major axis is the direction in which the hand is most stiff, and the minor axis is the least stiff. So impedance is the, in order to measure impedance, we have to consider from which direction we are applying the perturbation. It has been shown that impedance is adaptable, so it is very important to measure impedance very fast. If you measure it uh, in the traditional methods of robotic technology, where for measuring only one of these ellipses, we require to perform 64 trials that takes considerable amount of time, the impedance is already, or is already changed. So uh, it's also in, important to note that impedance is posture dependent. In different postures, same subject, same hand, same configuration, the impedance will change. Well, as I said, the, shortcom the shortcoming of the past methods are uh, they require so many 
reaching trials to, to measure only, to configure only one of these ellipses, and they cannot be applied to medical applications because we, we cannot ask a, per, a uh, stroke patient who have difficulty performing only one reaching task, perform 64 reaching tasks to, just in order to obtain one of these ellipses. So, assuming there is a device, handheld, and uh, it can measure the impedance very fast. In order for it to measure the impedance very fast, I needed to apply perturbation in X and Y direction uh, because I modeled the mechanics of the hand by uh, mass spring dampers in X and mass spring dampers in Y. And in order to configure the impedance of the X direction, we need a sinusoidal perturbation. Same for Y direction. So the idea here is to use centrifugal force due to, by, due to the rotating mass M, uh, which will create uh, a centrifugal force whose component in X and Y are sine waves. Actually, one of them is, if one of them is sine, the other one would be cosine, obviously. So, assuming that we have a technology or a device or a sensor that measures the acceleration, which is the response to this force perturbation. And if we measure the acceleration, and take integration of it, which is shown in this graph here. Uh, it is something close to a cosine or sine. And then if we transfer the velocity signal from time domain to angle domain, and Euclid uh, in a Euclidean manner, we add the x velocity and y velocity together, we will have the velocity of the uh, vibrating system in uh, for every angle and uh, the actually the centrifugal force itself is a constant it what it uh, what changes is the, the the direction of the centrifugal force so this is the design we have used we have used uh, a dc motor which rotates a mass and then I, an imu sensor which measures the response to the uh, perturbation the rotation frequency is 600 RPM, which makes 10 Hertz. So in every second, the mass rotates 10 times. So here is a sample of the acceleration signal. We take integration and then transfer into angle space, and then uh, add X and Y velocities together. And then we use this equation to divide force by velocity, which gives the impedance in every direction. If the impedance in every direction is plotted into polar diagram, we can see the major and the minor axis that we expected to see from the robotic measurements. And most important thing about this method that it, it can measure one of these ellipses in only one tenth of a second. So for every second, we have 10 of these ellipses. So for a single reaching task from point A to point B, it for, a, for a healthy page subject, it takes one and a half seconds. So in one and a half seconds, we can measure more than 10 of these ellipses, actually around 15, compared to the robotic devices, which need 64 reaching trial only to configure one of these ellipses. So in conclusion, uh, we discussed the configuration of mechanical impedance, which depends on the direction of perturbation. And in order to me measure mechanical impedance, we discussed that we need uh, to apply perturbation in several directions. So we came up with a, with a method that applies perturbation consistently, but what changes is the direction of the perturbation. For that, we use centrifugal force. And then the, using the centrifugal force, we applied sine perturbation to x and y direction. And uh, the response to that perturbation was measured and impedance was uh, computed. The measurement was tremendously faster than uh, comparable robotic technologies, and it is possible to measure several impedance ellipses even in a single reaching trial, which opens up the way to apply this method to real uh, clinical applications. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, please uh, direct your questions to this email. 
Thank you very much.